The second president that we're going to talk about is John Adams. John Adams replaced Washington as president after Washington had served eight years in office. Now, unlike Washington, John Adams was the very first president that actually had a political party, and we're going to talk about how that got started in just a second. And also, unlike Washington, Adams only serves one term in office or four years, and he served from 1797 to 1801. Now, I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that, that when I put dates like that next to the presidents, that's not their birth date and death date. That's how long they served in office, because if he was born in 1797, he'd only be four years old by the time he stopped being president, and that's ridiculous. So make sure that you keep that in mind. So... John Adams is elected as a second president. He was actually um, George Washington's vice president. And <clears throat> during Washington's term, there was some turmoil on um, running how the country should be run. There were different groups of people who wanted their ideas to be heard in the government. And so political parties started to be formed, even though George Washington warned against forming political parties in his farewell address. So political parties are... <clears throat> are groups of people that try and influence the gov government to support their ideas um, on how the government should be run. And if you think about the political parties that we have today, the two main political parties are Democrats and Republicans, though there are other smaller political parties as well. So the first two political parties that are formed are going to be the Democrat Republicans and the Federalists. And so we're just going to look at each side and see what they support and who their supporters are. So the Democrat Republicans um, was Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. And if you remember from George Washington, Thomas Jefferson and James Madison um, were two guys that really disagreed with Alexander Hamilton when it came to um, his financial plans. And so they thought that the government was having too much power. And so these guys uh, wanted to try and keep the government limited in its power. And so they were considered Democrat Republicans. On the other side were Federalists. And so Federalists were going to be... Uh, members who wanted to have a stronger government, and those were going to include Alexander Hamilton and John Adams. So Democrat Republicans are going to favor the regular working class, just average Joe citizen, um, which was a majority of what the United States was. And most of, of the people in this time period were farmers who really didn't have a lot of money or education. And so um, they really kind of followed what Democrat Republicans wanted with that small government. <clears throat> Federalists, on the other hand, uh, were supported by the wealthy and the educated. These were going to be guys that were businessmen and merchants who were going to benefit from the government having more power. And so Federalists were going to be supported by the, the, the businessmen. <clears throat> So Democrat Republicans wanted the, wanted a strong state government. They really feared that the national government was going to have too much power. Um, so they're kind of really they're kind of closely um, compared to like anti-federalists when we talked about the Constitution, who were afraid that the big government was going to take too much power away from the people. So Democrat Republicans want to limit the power of the central government. Federalists, on the other hand, want the national government to be strong. They want to limit the power of the states. They want that big government. They want the United States government, the one that's making the decisions. <clears throat> so Democrat Republicans wanted to make money in the United States by having an economy based on agriculture. So they wanted a bunch of small farms. They wanted to trade with France uh, for the most part. They wanted to be allies with France because they did most of their trade Agricultural rise with France, so Democrat Republicans uh, supported the French. Federalists, on the other hand, were all about industry and manufacturing. Because remember, big businesses and merchants supported Federalists, and so it would make sense that they would want to make money based on manufacturing. And in this time period, the United States did most of their trade uh, with England with, with manufacturing. So it made sense that the Federalists would support England when it came to <clears throat> allies. So Democrat Republicans believed in something called strict interpretation of the Constitution. So this means that they are going to follow the Constitution word for word to the letter. Whatever the Constitution says is what they can do. So an example to kind of explain what strict interpretation is in your world would be like if your parents say that you have to be in bed by 10 o'clock. Strict interpretation means that you are in bed at 10 o'clock and you go to sleep. That's strict interpretation. So you follow exactly what the rule says. 
Federalists, on the other hand, believed in loose interpretation of the Constitution, and that means that they're going to follow the Constitution more as a guideline. You guys are the masters of this. So a real-world example, again, is if your parents say that you have to be in bed by 10 o'clock, loose interpretation is, is that you're in bed at 10 o'clock, but you're on your phone, you're not asleep. All your parents said was that you had to be in bed. They didn't say anything about going to sleep. So that's the loose interpretation. You take the, the, the rule and you kind of bend it and make it how you want it to be. Okay, again, you guys are masters at that. So the reason why Federalists believed in loose interpretation is because this is going to give the government more power. Just like Democrat Republicans with the strict interpretation, it's going to limit the power of the government because the government can only do what the Constitution says. So right there is the examples of the two political parties that were formed. And remember that Washington did not want political parties because he feared that the nation was going to be divided, and he was right. So from here on out, there's going to start to be tension between these two political parties, the Democrat, Republicans, and the Federalists, and then later on down the line, different political parties. So this is how it began. Now we're going to get into Adams, John Adams as president. So first political party, he was a Federalist, so he believed in a strong national government. He believed in um, being allies with England. He believed in um, the manufacturing. He believed in um, supporting the wealthy and the educated. So keep those things in mind as we start talking about his foreign and domestic policies. So. The very first thing that Adams dealt with in office was the XYZ affair. <clears throat> and so what was happening with the XYZ affair is that England and France were at war. And Adams was trying to follow Washington's advice and stay neutral, which meant he was not going to get involved with either England or France. He was going to trade with both. But France began attacking American ships as they were sailing to England. And so we, uh, the United States, sent... Um, men to France to try and get the French to stop attacking our ships. So it was like a, like a foreign relations meeting. But when the Americans got to France, they tried to speak with the French prime minister, which is kind of like the leader. And the, they were not able to see the French prime minister because some of his officials demanded a bribe before they could see the prime minister. Um, and a bribe is just where they wanted money in exchange to do something. And the, the U.S. men said, absolutely not. <clears throat> so the, this got back to Adams. They came back and said, hey, this is what they want to do. And Adams was absolutely outraged. And a lot of his um, supporters and wanted to go to war. They said, why, you know, why are we allowing France to attack our ships? We need to do something about it. We need to go to war. But Adams still wanted to remain neutral. Um, and so what he said was, that we're just not going to trade with France. We're going to stop our trade with France. And um, instead of referring to these men that asked for the bribe, they were known as X, Y, and Z. And so this event became known as the X, Y, Z affair. So even though we didn't go to war, uh, we solved the problem by saying that we just weren't going to trade with France so that France would stop attacking our ships. Um, we did not pay the bribe. And this kind of uh, was, it was, this was a good thing for Adams as um, president. But the Democrat Republicans criticized how Adams dealt with the XYZ affair. And they thought that he should have handled it much differently than he did. And so they began to print things in the newspaper, uh, you know, that were going against Adams and, and talking about how Adams was not doing a good job as president. And it really got under Adams' skin that they were doing this. And so he passed the Alien and Sedition Acts. And these were some iffy laws that kind of gave the president a little too much power. Um, so a couple of things that the Alien and Sedition Acts did was it gave the president the power to deport immigrants and change the citizenship time. It used to be that you had to wait five years to be a citizen of the United States, and Adams changed it to 17 years. You had to live in the United States for 17 years before you could become a citizen, which means that you weren't allowed to vote until you were a citizen. Um, and so he did that because he was, again, keeping the the uneducated, the usually immigrants that were coming in were farmers who, you know, did not have a big education, who would mainly become Democrat Republicans when they lived in the country long enough. He tried to keep that from happening by either deporting them back to their own countries or keeping them from being U.S. citizens. So again, trying to give his political uh, party more power. The other thing and the most important thing that Adams did with the Alien and Sedition Acts was made sedition illegal, which meant that the 
the people could not criticize the government. And if you think about what we just talked about with the Bill of Rights, why that was so, so wrong, because it violated a the First Amendment, because you have the First Amendment right to criticize the government. You can print what you want to say about the government, and the government can't tell you anything. So this was actually unconstitutional. It went against the Constitution, and it made the Federalist Party very unpopular to the point that it was eventually going to fade away. These are the two major things that happened during Adam's term. The XYZ affair, where France was attacking our ships, and we decided to stop trading with France, would be a foreign issue because it happened outside of the country. And the Alien and Sedition Acts, where Adams deported uh, immigrants and made it illegal to say anything bad about the government, would be a, a domestic issue. But because of the things that he dealt with in office, Adams was very unpopular and did not get reelected after his four years was up.